Okay, now we're going to look at some inputs, both digital and analog. So we have kind of a mix of some of the sensors that uh, we use in Fisher Tech. I'm going to first start off with the most common, which is the push button switch here. Uh, we'll first look at the icon that's on there. Um, you'll notice that there's three um, ports to plug into with your wires, and you'll notice that they're numbered. You can see the little graphic on there that's got a one, two, and a three. And uh, the first thing is is that the plug always plugs into the, the number one port, which is right in the middle. Um, and it doesn't matter which color plug you plug into. And now we have an option to plug it into three or two. Um, most times we plug into port into uh, the hole that's labeled number three. And the reason is is because if you notice from the little diagram that this switch is not currently touching um, that connector. This is called a normally open switch, which there's a gap that's been opened, um, which means that when the button is not pressed, the value that the computer sees, or the interface sees, is a zero. And then when I press the switch, uh, that value would then go to a one. And that's um, probably the most common way to use a switch. Uh, but there are times where you want the switch to be in the normally closed position, which would be then plugged into these two ports. Uh, if you notice in the diagram, those are already connected. So currently, my value would be a 1, and when I press it, it opens a gap and then would give a value of a 0. And we'll look at this in the test interface window on the robot or the RoboPro software here in just a few minutes. Uh, but typically we're going to plug it into the one and three positions on the switch. Because this is a digital input, it goes into a digital input port. If you remember from the first video, that's anything from I1 to I8. So I have eight digital input spots uh, to plug these in. And in this case, I'm going to plug it into I1. So that's how I plug this in. Um, the next digital um, input is a photo transistor which is this little guy right here um, it has uh, it looks like a little lens that's in there but it's actually it's a it's not a light bulb this is a detector and it's what's called a polar device which means in this case it does make a difference on how you plug in your wires into both the interface and into the uh, sensor. If you notice it has a little red side, uh, it plugs in just like the lamps, but this time the red side has to be plugged into the red. And then on your interface, the red side goes on the bottom on your interface. And this will show up. Um, this is a detector that uses that lamp with a lens. So um, I would have the lamp with a lens sitting across from it. It's shining a beam of light directed at the sensor. When the light is there, it reads a 1. And then if I block it, so if I put my finger in front or have an object cross in front, that detector will go to a 0 when no light is present, when it's blocked. So it's a great little sensor. Uh, we programmed over the summer some garage door openers. We use this at the bottom to simulate the, uh, the beam of of light that goes across at the bottom of a garage door for the safety if anyone crosses um, in front of it that it kicks the door back open. So this is a great sensor for that, for counting, looking at how many times an object passes by a sensor. Um, these are nice little devices for that. Uh, the next sensors we're going to look at are analog sensors. So these get plugged into the AX and AY ports which are over here on my uh, robot interface. Uh, these aren't polar, so it doesn't matter which way you plug them in. I have two examples of photo cells. So this one is uh, called a photo transistor. It's digital. And these two are photo cells or photo resistors. These are analog. They give you a range of values. Um, the first one is the purchased one from Fisher Tech. I think these cost $20 a piece. Um, they work great. They're fine, except they're um, very expensive. So what you can do is you can retrofit um, some store-bought ones. So I bought a packet of uh, photo cell, uh, assorted photo cells from Radio Shack. I think I got five or six in a bag for five dollars. 
and what you can do is you can actually take the housing from a lamp so if you pull this this lamp housing out you can actually remove the wire and you can unfeed the the lamp and actually pull this lamp bulb out of this white socket that it's sitting in and what I did is I just replaced the lamp bulb with the photo resist the photoresistor the photo cell and then I can plug it back into the port so I can use some aftermarket sensors that are a lot cheaper uh, in my build um, these are analog again they plug into the analog ports um, AX or AY so you get two options for that the other analog sensor we have is an NTC resistor um, this again is done the same way if you notice here um, this sensor will come in a packet and if you can kind of see you'll notice all I did is I brought the wire down through and up just like it was when I took out the lamp that was in that original housing so I can use these nice connectors um, and put this anywhere in my build with a block again it can go in a yellow one of these it can go in a, a black one I have black out like this part of the brick and they make gray ones as well um, you put them in whatever one doesn't matter usually I try to keep uh, the yellow is the photo transistor and then anything black or gray uh, is my photo cell or my NTC resistor. It kind of helps my students um, decide what's digital and what's analog so this is probably not a good combination putting an analog sensor into the yellow um, but it's the one I grabbed. Um, it plugs in the same way again make sure you're going across the device when you plug it in so again, it needs to be plugged into these two side ports, so here, so the electrons are flowing through to here, through my sensor, and then back out um, through, that, through that wire. So those are your analog and digital sensors. Um, again, there are more in the kit. These are just some common ones and the ones that students have or use the most and have the most trouble with.